Hi guys, uh, welcome to another practice question where we got a question uh, on well, this particular subject on FSH and LH. So you've seen this numerous times in your notes already and we just wanted to give you an example of kind of a complex question that you often see um, with uh, these type of questions. So let's get right to it. Uh, take a look at the first one here. This is a typical question. So of course it says here, uh, use the following information to answer the next two questions. And then they give you this very complex type of flow chart. Okay, when you see a question like this, and you're going to see many of them like this, uh, mice are one of the strategies I think to incorporate is to just to fill out, even before you look at the information, fill out what these hormones are. See if you can figure that out before you even look at the question and that. So it's saying the hypothalamus sends hormone number one to the anterior pituitary. And posterior pituitary then sends hormone two, and that targets the follicles and causes the follicles in the ovary to uh, grow. Okay? So, what they're talking about here is getting a primary follicle developing into a secondary follicle. So, if we remember correctly, uh, the hormone that the anterior pituitary releases to stimulate the primary to develop into the secondary follicle, of course, is FSH. So write that right in, okay? Now, go back up a bit. Hypothalamus, how does it initiate or stimulate the anterior pituitary to release something? Well, probably an inhibiting, or sorry, a releasing hormone, okay? So an RH. Hypothalamus, releasing hormone, causes the anterior pituitary, and let's finish up with the left side here. Uh, releases FSH that car, uh, causes the primary follicle to develop into the secondary follicle. It matures, it grows, it matures. And what is that primary follicle going to release? Well, if we remember correctly, it's going to be high levels of estrogen. Okay, and remember this was around days uh, 6 to 13, just before ovulation and that that, that occurs. So go back to the other side, anterior pituitary will also cause uh, the corpus luteum to produce another hormone. So we know, of course, that that hormone 3 has to be LH, luteinizing hormone. Okay, and it causes the formation more specifically of the corpus luteum. The corpus luteum, do you remember? Hopefully you remember the hormone that it produces, and it produces high levels of progesterone, and I'll just abbreviate it. Now, it does release, uh, get it to secrete some estrogen, but higher progesterone levels. And this, of course, is on days, um, it's after ovulation now, so days 15 to around 28. Probably not quite up to 28, but we'll just put it in there uh, like that for now. Okay? So, once we fill out that diagram, didn't take us too long, providing we worked with some of the flow charts and some of the strategies that we uh, looked at in previous videos on how to incorporate some of this information into long-term memory. Uh, let's look at the question. So which row correctly identifies hormone two? Well, we've already done that by filling this out. Hormone three, hormone four, and hormone five. So now all we have to do is we just have to match those. Okay, so you can see hormone two was FSH. We can get rid of uh, B, so we know that isn't. Even if you don't know what the other ones are, are, remember we talked about process of elimination. Take what you do know and, uh, and hopefully eliminate some of the things that you don't know with that. So hormone two, if you knew absolutely that that's FSH, you can cross out B now and you can cross out D, okay? So now you have a 50-50 chance, it can be either A or C. Hormone three is LH, that's true, but both of these are true as well, so that doesn't narrow it down any further. But hormone two causes the follicle to release high levels of estrogen right there, and that now eliminates C as an option. Hormone five, of course, is progesterone. So our right answer here is A. So we incorporated a number of strategies First of all, when you get these complex fill, uh, flow charts, fill them in. If you've done your homework, if you've done your study strategies, you, that should be easy, shouldn't take long at all. Then use uh, some process of elimination if you don't know all of the flow chart, and hopefully from that you can come up with a, um, you know, the best possible option there. 
Uh, this, of course, had two questions, so let's take a look at question two. For some reason, this dotted line got cut off, so I'm just going to fill that dotted line up. Okay, and what they're showing you is on this diagram, the dotted lines is in uh, inhibits. Uh, the, the full line is stimulates. So let's look at this second question. According to the, the diagram, secretions of hormone 1. So we said hormone 1 was RH, releasing hormone, causes the anterior, anterior pituitary. We said, of course, to release FSH, which causes the follicle to release high estrogen. Just filling this in really quickly. And this one was LH, we determined that to be. And that caused the corpus to release high levels of progesterone. So you can see that what happens is these high estrogen, high progesterone causes is indicated or detected by the hypothalamus. And the hypothalamus would then say, hey, let's stop releasing RH. And then let's actually release a inhibiting hormone that causes the anterior pituitary to stop this, right? Because if we have enough estrogen and progesterone already, we need that negative feedback mechanism to shut down those overproduction of estrogen and progesterone. So when we look at that question that we just filled in, it says, uh, uh, what's likely to uh, inhibit hormone one? Uh, let's take a look at the first option. It says increased levels of LH and FSH. No, that's not what happened. It was actually increased levels of estrogen and increased progesterone that the dotted line, negative feedback, was detected by the hypothalamus or the pituitary in some cases. So that can't be it. So decreased levels of LH, FSH, FSH has nothing to do with that. Let's take a look at C. Increased levels of ovarian hormones. So ovarian hormones obviously are hormones that are produced by the uh, ovary, and that would be high levels of estrogen, high levels of progesterone. So this looks like the right answer uh, to me. Uh, D is decreased levels. No, it was actually increased levels that are detected by the hypothalamus that would stop the production of RH, would actually start releasing inhibiting hormone, to cause the anterior pituitary to stop releasing FSH and LH. And once you've accomplished that, you can bring your estrogen progesterone levels in to check. So complex question, but we looked at a few strategies to hopefully help you be able to tackle this type of question on an exam. Okay, guys, any question, you know the format. Just give me an email. We can set up some time. Uh, if not, uh, good luck on the exam, and we will talk to you guys soon. Thanks, guys. Bye.